The absolute best way to improve as a programmer is to build as many projects as possible. But building projects can take a lot of time if you're not using the right tools. And the thing is, the tool that you should use to build your projects always depends on the kind of project you're building. And developers around the world have built different tools to suit different purposes. As every tool is just that, a way to solve some problem as a developer. So as a programmer, it's absolutely crucial that you familiarize yourself with as many of the tools that are out there as possible. And today I will show you three new tools that you probably aren't using as a programmer to help you build projects much faster. And by the way, everyone knows tools like ChatGPT, VS Code and all these kinds of tools. So I'm not going to talk about those because those are the obvious ones, but rather I will talk about three very specific tools for specific use cases that you might not have heard of before to add to your toolkit as a programmer. And all the tools in this video are from Idera, who I've partnered with to make this video, but more of them in a second. But before we talk about the tools, let's briefly talk about my project building philosophy. Like, what do I actually think about when I am building a new coding project? And people overcomplicate this a lot. I get so many questions in my comments like, oh, how do you build projects? Like, what do you use? All these kind of things. But really, all of this is very, very simple. It's just step one, I choose a project that I am excited about. And if you just do that, that will pretty much solve all of your problems. Because if you really want to build the thing that you're trying to build, then it will make it so much easier to actually stick to it and go through and solve the problems that you're going to encounter while building the project. And after I have chosen my project, I will step two, build the what I call the minimum viable product version of that project. So essentially, I will look at the project and think about what is the simplest possible version I can make to fulfill the needs that I want that project to fulfill. And step three, I will simply iteratively optimize and add new features to that project. And as I just keep doing that for longer and longer, the project will keep getting better and better and better. And then I can essentially choose when I'm done with that project and move on to something different. So the tools in this video are from Idera. So what Idera is, it's essentially an umbrella company for tons of cool development tools like text editors, code deployment tools, low code tools, and many, many more. They have a lot of like different brands under the same company. I've used many of their tools before. So you can check out their website down below in the description for all the tools they have available. And the first tool I wanted to talk about in this video from Idera is called Ultra Edit. So Ultra Edit is a market leading suite of text editing tools for Windows, Macs, and Linux users. And they are specifically renowned for their large file handling capabilities, as well as security hardened suite of tools. So I'm going to show you their main editor, Ultra Edit, in a second, but they also have different packages that include the Ultra Edit text editor, Ultra Edit, Ultra Edit Studio, which is a text editor with Git integration, Ultra Compare, which is a diff tool, Ultra Finder, which is the search utility, and Ultra FTP, which is an SSH slash FTP client. So I started using this tool because I was doing some project where I needed to play around with a couple of very, very big files. And the issue I came up with is that, for example, right here, we have a very large C CS wiki dump XML file. And when I try to open it with a traditional text editor like VS Code, it will not open as you can see right here. So I needed a specialized tool to deal with these very large files. And Ultra Edit is essentially the text editor for that purpose. So now inside Ultra Edit, I'm going to open the same file that we tried and failed to open with VS Code. And as you can see, it opens with no problems inside of Ultra Edit that we can now just scroll through. We can go to different sections in the file. We can edit it. We can do pretty much whatever we want here. So just to show you a few of the things we can do here, we can do some find and replace either within the file or we have more advanced options in here. We can use match case. We can even use regular expressions to search the entire file or we can use replace right here. Now there's two ways to do find a replace. You can either replace within the code editor and that is going to be slightly slower because of how it works behind the scenes. But for a faster way, which you, by the way, cannot undo. So don't do this method if you're not sure about your replace is to use replace in files where it will actually go directly into the disk and edit the file from there, which is going to be much, much faster. A bunch of other things we can do. We can even do hex editing, which is like pretty advanced. Most of you are not going to need this, but if you want to like edit the underlying hex code of these files to do some very low level edits, you can do that as well. Basically for some very advanced use cases, they're going to have a bunch of features in here. I found it very 
very useful whenever working with big files. The second tool on our list is Whole Tomatoes Visual Assist. So this is for whenever I code C++ projects. It's essentially a code assistance tool that makes coding any C++ project much, much faster. It boosts my productivity a ton with all of their features that I'm going to show you in a second. So what this is, is basically an extension that you can install on Visual Studio. So here's just a walkthrough of some of the features that I like the most about it. All right, so I'm now inside of a C++ project inside of a Visual Studio where I have installed Visual Assist. And the way you use it is that you can right click on any code and then you can see this option quick actions and refactoring VA. And the first thing we can do is rename a function right here. And whenever we rename a function, it will automatically be renamed everywhere where that function is used. We can also change the signature of the function, like change the return type, change the parameters, and we can even search for all of the projects where that function is used. We can also convert an instance to a pointer or vice versa. And we can also automatically generate getters and setters for any class members by clicking right here on encapsulate field. And over here, I can just change the name of the setters and getters and click OK, and it will automatically generate my getter and setter just like that. We also have access to a bunch of extra tools when we go to extension and then V assist X. For example, we have a snippet manager where you can save snippets and insert them into your code. We have some code generation tools and there's a bunch of other features that you can use that you can take a look at on the website, but I would recommend just downloading it, installing it, and then playing around with all these different options. This is just what I like the most. So for any C or C++ developer, I think installing this is just a no brainer. Like why would would you not have it? It will make coding any C or C++ project so much faster. And the third tool on our list is Rad Studio. Now, this is something that is very close to me because I actually coded a startup before that was a desktop application that we wanted to be installable in all kinds of different platforms like Windows and Mac at the same time. But we ran into many different challenges with making the same app work seamlessly with both Windows and Mac. There were so many different things when we needed to have separate code for Mac and Windows and it was very, very difficult and it ended up wasting us so much time. Sadly, at the time, I was not aware of Rad Studio, which is essentially an IDE that is optimized to help you make cross-platform applications that work across many different platforms as easily as possible and with just one single code base. And then the way it works behind the scenes is that your code essentially compiles automatically into the native code on all of the platforms that you want to use. This means that as a developer, you sort of get a double advantage. Number one, you get the efficiency of only maintaining one one code base plus the efficiency and performance of having platform native code. All right, so once you install Rad Studio, this is what you're going to see. So you want to choose your languages. So Rad Studio works on the C++ and Delphi languages. I'm just going to choose both of them right here. And then you want to choose your target platform. So which platforms are you trying to make your applications for? So to create a new project, you go right here on File, New, and then you can choose the type of application you want to create. We're just going to choose a multi-device application in Delphi. As you can see here, it's going to show me all the icons of the platforms that I'm able to create this application for. I'm just going to make a blank application right there. And then what you're going to see here is this central panel, which is going to be the visual tool that's going to help you visualize your application as you're building it. And then on the top right here, we have this project panel where you're going to be able to see your target platforms. And then right here, we have this palette that allows us to add these components into our application by simply searching for them and being right here. So we're going to quickly make a demo calendar application. And for that, we have this T calendar component that we're going to use. So we're going to drag and drop that to our project that we can see on the top left with all the components we have. Then we're going to drag a couple of buttons. And once you do that, you can right click and then quick edit to rename them and to change the text that is going to display. At the bottom here, we can change from our visual editor to our code editor, which is going to be where the code, where we actually manage the components that we drag into our app from. So I've got these buttons here. I've named them next month and previous month. I'm going to get one more button, uh, which is going to be a button to display the current date. I will also get a label. And then on the bottom left corner right here, we have this object inspector that allows us to essentially edit a lot of the different properties of these components. And we can add events to them. So when someone clicks, we can define which function is going to run and things like this. And then inside of our code here, I pasted some code, which is where we actually manage this application 
animation. I'm not gonna walk through that right now, but you can play around with it as you wish. And then you can do a bunch of stuff like align them in different ways and everything like that. And then we're gonna change some things in the code right here. And so we essentially have these functions in sort of a code which we connect to these buttons from the object inspector right here. And once we are ready, we can run the application in development mode by clicking on run right here. And as you can see, the application works, the buttons work, everything like that. And once you are done, from the top, you can then click on project and then build project. Then you choose the platform they want to build it for. And then you choose the location where you want to save that project. And would you look at that? We now have a calendar application. And with the same code base, we can easily also export it on Mac or whatever platform you want, which makes it very easy to build cross-platform applications with a single code base and with this visual code editor. So I believe the links to download all these three tools. You can get free trials for all of them with the links down below in the description. And if you're looking to hear more mainstream tools that are going to be relevant to pretty much every programmer, then I actually made this video right here with the top seven coding tools that I cannot live without as a programmer. So go watch that video next and I'll see you next one.